want to work on stick plotting for the period, or do you want to move on to some empty hand application of stick fighting principles? Uh, well, we got sticks. I all right, we got sticks. sticks. Yeah, okay, all right I then. Think that would be good to do your okay. empty hand stuff also. All right, uh, well, I'm, again. then I'll just show you how it works, and we'll work with sticks for the hour, okay? Should all I right. pair him up with a, yep. one of the boys there? Okay. Did you get Good. some sticks, honey? Yeah. You got some? Okay. <laughs> okay, come to attention. Bow. Ready position. Okay, uh, for those of you who don't know, my name's Steve Smith. I'll just give you a little introduction. I uh, began training with Joe Lewis in 1967. How many people have been on the planet since 1967? Ah, oh, there we go, two. Okay. Um, so I've been doing the uh, Filipino martial arts for the last 20 years or so. Uh, it's an integrated system. It's called Dose Paris. Uh, it includes uh, ground fighting, uh, kickboxing, uh, what's called Pagamont Kilat, which is empty hand training, and of course, Eskrima and Eskrito. Uh, Eskrima is stick fighting, which is what we're going to do primarily today. Um, I just want to show you um, how this system's integrated. So if, uh, if Mr. Herrera here no, uh, just, you know, were to attack me with a, a three strike, which is to the temple, I could block it with a stick, I could counter him back, and I could disarm or whatever I'm going to do. If he were to attack me with a knife, the same angle, I could use the same principle, I could disarm him, take the knife away from him, or I could strip the knife, and then execute uh, a counter. If you were to punch me, I, uh, either way, sort of, I could, I could uh, just do a destruction on his shoulder, I could block his shoulder, or I could come <coughs> up under his jaw and then work him over with some empty hand techniques. So <clears throat> it's all based on the same principles, it's all based, based on the same numbering system. And the thing that I like about Keylot is it doesn't require a lot of kicking. Uh, and it's it's a, an aggressive blitzing uh, system, uh, but we're going to start with sticks. And so let's warm up a little bit. Everybody, grab the stick. You need to grab a stick about a hand's width up on the stick. So because we're going to use the butt of the stick as much as we're going to use the um, the tip of the stick. So about a hand's width up. So let's just <coughs> circle them up, circle them down. Good, good. Okay, now you want to maintain a full grip. A full grip means that your thumb is over your index finger. Okay, it's easier to twist them, to spin them, if you release them, but they're easily disarmed. So, Martin, we're going to just maintain control of the stick. We're just going to let them fall. Yeah, like that. Good, good, good. Okay, both uh, sticks up on the shoulder. Put the right one down. Left one down, good. Right one up, left one up, okay. Right one down, left one down, right one up, left one down, up, right one down. Okay, now alternate them if you can. Okay. This is hard. <laughs> um, this is different than anything else you've ever done. And what the stick does is just an extension of your arm, really. And um, so everything that we're going to be doing today is going to be new for most of you. Okay, make, make sure you maintain that grip that we talked about. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is what are called pinky pinky drills. And pinky pinky drills are intended just to familiarize you with the stick. Um, it it uh, improves coordination, improves timing distance and so forth and so um, the most there are three chambers in our system does it Paris open chamber closed chamber and semi chamber okay we're going to start with open chamber which is the simplest and so we're going to do uh, the most basic of four counts so we're going to go one two three four one two three four now when you do these you want to consider the stick to be a bladed weapon okay it's as if you're doing this with a sword. So I'm leading with 
my pinky. I'm not leading with the tip of the stick. So it's, I'm going to pull it down into a 45 degree angle. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. Grab a partner. Let's see you do that one. So now we're going to do the second part of this drill. So we're going to go one under your uh, left arm, two over your right shoulder, and then open it back up again. Three, four, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Everybody got it? Yes, sir. stick is, is a great weapon, but it's got some limitations, and it's hard to use stick fighting in close. So with the, this is called a wit tick move. So if uh, I were fighting Kenny and I were in close, I would just come in here and just use my wrist. One, two, one, two. So the last part of this drill is going to be one, two, one, two. So it's very short movement. Just use your wrist. Okay, like a sword fight. No, no, it, right, right. pretty cocky, but we'll see how you feel after this one. Okay, so we're just going to do uh, a very simple four count. They're all going to be high, right, left, right, left. So we're going to start from a closed chamber. It's going to go one, two, three, four, and back to the closed chamber. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay? Six months to learn it, so I'm really feeling bad here. That's all. <laughs> all right, so now we're going to do a basic six count. So it's going to go high, high, low, high, high, low, right, left, right, left, right, left. Okay, here we go. So we're going to start from the closed chamber. So it's going to go high, high. Uh, let's just do all high. So high, high. 
pi, 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 pi. Now the, the third and the uh, sixth beats are going to be a snapback. So right, left, right snapback, left, right, left snapback. Right, left, right snapback, left, right, left snapback. Okay? Yes, sir. Um, there's about a billion of these pinky pinky drills and like I say it's there's no practical application for it it's just a drill to teach distance and timing and rhythm and that sort of thing okay and, and to get the feel of the stick we're gonna move on real quickly because I want to cover a lot of stuff today so if um, can you drop your stick so if uh, this again is a drill this again is a drill just to uh, demonstrate a couple of principles whenever you disarm a weapon, whether it's a knife or a stick or whatever it is, you're always going to disarm against the thumb because that's a weak part of the grip. Okay, so if Kenny were to grab my stick, and I, I mean, a lot of things I could do. I could poke him in the eye, I guess. But uh, what I would do is, if I wanted my stick back, is I pull him in to break his balance, step back, turn the stick to vertical, pull down against his thumbs, counter back to his center line. Could be the groin, could be the solar plexus, could be the, the throat. What we're going to do is we're going to drop that stick back, back of his neck. We're going to grab the stick as close as we can with our hands as close to the neck as we possibly can. And then I'm going to just uh, spread my elbows, okay? And it puts pressure on the carotid artery. And if you need more leverage, you just stick your head in there, okay? You, you can take this, this choke and you can make a throw out of it. You can take him down to the ground. You can maintain that. Uh, that contact with his uh, neck and probably break his neck. So we're not going to do that. So he grabs, I pull him, break balance, turn the, vic uh, the stick to vertical, pull straight down, thrust straight back to the solar plexus, drop the stick over his neck, and, and squeeze your wrist against his neck and then start to open your uh, elbows. Okay? Martin, you like this one, I can tell it. <clears throat> okay. It's so, across the brachial plexus origin. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you get the pain from. One, one <laughs> stick between two people. Nobody out in a long time. Man. I know. Come That's on. what I'm worried about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this please just bring your wrist against my neck first and then pull me in and then oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is pretty good. So the other one is um, this is kind of a cool choke if uh, if I get up underneath Kenny's arm and I place the tip of my stick against his neck ah! I can I can um, exert a lot of pressure on that point a little notch in your neck and it really hurts. Okay, so we're not going to work on that today. I just want to show you a lot of th what I'm doing is just to show you the principles of this stick fighting. I want to get into a couple of disarms and some mosquito moves. Um, so if Kenny attacks me with a two strike, which is over here, I'm going to block. I'm going to catch control. When I catch control means hand and stick. I want to control his hand and his stick because I want to know where the, his hand is and I want to know where his stick is. Okay, I'm going to take his stick, I'm going to counter back against his rib cage, I'm going to put the tip of my stick behind his, and I'm just going to turn away, and I'll be able to disarm him. Okay, so it looks like this. So he attacks me, so he's going to attack me like this. He's going to come in 
attack me hard. So I'm going to block, catch control, counter, put the butt of my stick behind his, and just turn away. And I'm going to disarm his stick. So then I got both sticks. He doesn't have either one. Yep. So he hits me with a, uh, as I explained before, dose paris, 12, 12 strikes, 12 corresponding blocks. This is called a two strike. So he's going to attack me to, to my uh, head, my temple. I'm going to take his stick. And I want three points of uh, control. So I take his stick, I put it under my arm so I know where that stick is. I'm always going to counter back. In this case, I'm just going to counter against his rib cage. I'm going to take the tip of my stick. So the block from straight away, but down and away. Okay, so try that. Do the exact same movement. Except this time, I'm not going to let go of his hand. I'm going to use my elbow to enhance the crank on this stick, and I'm gonna push it straight down towards the ground, okay? So it's like a Z break. Everybody do a Z break, you know what that is? Okay, so if you hit me with a two strike, I'm gonna catch control counter, put my stick behind his. This time though, my elbow is gonna go behind my own stick, and I'm gonna push straight down to the ground. Now, you need to push vertically down. If you push, if you pull, if you pull it out, if you don't push down, and he's stronger than you, or he's limber, it's just gonna be a wrestling match. So you gotta turn, you gotta turn your stick uh, vertical and push straight down, okay? Okay, so exact same uh, entry that we had to start. So catch control, I'm controlling his stick, I'm countering back, putting the butt of my stick behind his. This time though, I'm gonna put my stick, my elbow behind my stick and I'm gonna enhance the crank on my stick and I'm gonna pull it straight down. So the only thing that changes is no disarmor. Is there's no, yeah, you're just gonna hang on to it. That's correct. Whenever you come up, however you come up with your technique, if, what, if you're shooting bullseyes, I've got nothing to say to you. If you're not, you may need to change something. The reason Master Wallace can get away with this is because of the adduction and able to rotate. When he comes up, it's here, but once he rotates, that weapon's right on target. So the difference between that and Master Lewis is he is stomping with the sidekick. You with me? Basically the same thing, one faster, one quicker, other one probably a little more power. So all you're doing is, is using this, lightening up with it, and I gotta get my weapon to the target. Sorry. So all I'm doing is, is just that little AD duction and popping it in there. So your timing is jab, jab, you're already there ready to kick. You with me? Let's do it. Okay, so let me just go over this once again very slowly. So. It's actually a pretty simple disarm. Again, we're gonna disarm against the weak part of the grip, which is the thumb. So this is a three strike to the side of my head. I'm gonna block, I'm gonna catch control, hand and stick, I'm gonna counter back to his rib cage. I'm gonna slide the stick, trace underneath his arm, right behind his wrist, and I want my stick to be vertical. At the same time, I'm moving my hand out to the end of his stick to give me more leverage. I'm gonna push on the end of the stick and pull on the end of my stick towards my hip and break uh, disarm him against the, the weak part of his grip, which is the thumb, okay? Does everybody see that? Okay, all right, try it a couple more times. Uh, well, so, when you're, we don't have time to go over the bases, but the hand is slightly behind the stick, so at the same time I'm going to do my counter, I'm also sliding my hand up to catch him. So, you're really not, 
you know, countering yourself. And then I'm just going to trace this up along the back of his arm to his wrist. At the same time, I'm going to slide my hand to the end of his stick. I'm going to push this way and I'm going to pull this way towards my hip. All right. Got it? So we're going to turn that very same disarm into another escrito move, okay? Kenny's favorite part of the demonstration here. So we're going to block, catch control, counter. We're going to do the exact same thing, except this time I'm going to lay my stick over his wrist. I'm going to snake my hand up behind his stick. I'm going to put my wrist as close to his wrist as I possibly can, and I'm going to turn my stick to vertical, okay? Again, I could take him down to the ground if I wanted to. So the hard part of this is, at least it is for me, is this part, snaking your hand over the stick and behind his wrist. Okay, so we want to drop his stick, my stick, over his wrist and turn it to vertical. Okay? Let's try it. One more time, slow, please. One more time. Here we go. One more time, please. All right, so <clears throat> catch, catch control, counter, trace. trace. We're going to drop his, my stick over his wrist. I'm going to take this hand, snake it be behind his wrist, and grab my own stick. Hands are facing each other, right? This one's facing this way, this one's facing this way. Palms are facing each other. I'm going to turn the stick to vertical again, and I'm going to step back and take him down. OK, try it. Well, at the time we have left, I want to just um, introduce another Filipino fighting art concept. It's called kila. Kila means uh, uh, lightning hands. And so we're going to use the same principles we use on stick fighting. We're just going to use it in an empty hand fashion. Um, so, Mr. Uh, Master Hudson, can I see for a second? So, if, um, if I'm in a confrontation with Master Hudson, I know this wouldn't happen, but if I knew who he was and we bumped into each other on the street or in a bar or something and he took exception of it, do you think I'm going to want to fight, kickbox Kevin Hudson? No. I am not. Likewise, likewise, if I bumped into Master Green, do you think I'm going to want to grapple with him? I do not. And if I bumped into uh, Master Lysak, do you think I'm going to try to bite his eyeball before he bites mine? I am not. So what I want to do is I want to, I want to uh, subdue the situation as quickly as I possibly can. So I could kickbox him, and I might be able to last like 10 or 15 seconds until he got a kick in my head. But look, this is the same for everybody. Look, does that hurt? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it oh, hurts yeah. everybody. Okay? So why would I want to try to duke it out with him when I can just rake his eye, poke him in the eye, um, knee him, elbow him, whatever that might be? So if, if, he, if uh, Master Hudson were to hit me with a, uh, a jab, let's say, so I could parry, catch, back knuckle, okay? So now all my weapons are facing this way, his weapons are facing this way. There's a concept in the uh, Filipino Indonesian martial arts called defanging the snake. Defanging the snake means that you're going to attack the body part that's the closest to you. So most American fighters want to attack the head all the time. We're just going to attack what's closest. So if he hits me with a jab, I'm going to parry catch. I might do a destruction to his uh, tricep, break his jaw, bring him back, and do a whipping elbow. Whipping elbow. Elbows. Okay. These are the elbow strikes, up, side, and down. A whipping elbow is like a punch, but you're just using your elbow. Don't ever do an elbow this way, because you're going to hurt yourself, OK? All right, so likewise, if he were to hit me with a jab again, I could go inside, and I could rake his eyes, grab him behind the neck, pull him into an elbow, knee, and then whipping elbow, OK? So keylot is not intended to be a sport. It's intended to be a self-defense system to end a fight as quickly as possible. Either incapacitate the person or incapacitate the person. Okay, so um, let's work on this a little bit. The other thing is this key, uh, this, uh, key lot is designed to be used with weapons. So if you hit me with a cross, let's say, so I could do a destruction, go ahead. I could do a destruction on his uh, hand, come in, elbow him, and so forth. But I could, if I had a Filipino people are devious people, and they have this weapon called a, uh, a karambit. Okay, so a karambit is a knife that looks like this. There you go. Okay, so it's not designed for stabbing, it's designed for slicing. So if he did the same, <laughs> kick, 
So if you have a, the advantage of a karambit is that you can slice with it, you can pass with it, but you can also turn it over and on your exit you can, you can uh, cut a femoral artery or a neck or something. So if he comes in with a, with a cross, I could do that same destruction on his hand, boom, cut his hand, turn it over and slice his neck. Or I could do that same destruction, pass with the knife, and then I'm in here. Now, another concept in Keylot is called a foot trap. So if you were to hit me with a jab, so in addition to controlling his arm, I'm also controlling his foot, okay? So I know exactly where he is. It's very important to do foot trapping because if he tries to move away from me, I, he's stuck. Okay, I know where his foot is, and I also know where, some, where his arm is. Okay, the same thing if he were to jab me again, do the same thing on the inside, foot trapping. And if I were just to push him back this way, probably rip out his knee. Okay, so foot trapping is a very important uh, concept in uh, the Filipino martial arts too. So we're going to work um, since you did so well on the stick. We're going to work a little bit on some of these entries, and there's a lot of different entries. So